When I was in high school, I was full of energy and loved trying new things. The idea of going on a week-long hiking trip was super exciting. I had planned everything carefully, even down to the last snack bar. I thought I was really smart for bringing a hammock instead of a heavy tent. But I didn't know that this choice would turn my fun trip into a scary experience. The first few days were amazing. The hammock was comfy, and I felt really close to nature, gently swinging with the wind under the stars. But then, things started to go wrong. I started to feel a scratchy feeling in my throat that wouldn't go away. I thought it was just a small problem, maybe because of the dry air. By the fourth night, the scratchy feeling had turned into a bad case of post-nasal drip. I could feel the mucus building up, making it hard to swallow. I tried to sleep it off, hoping it would get better by morning. But the hammock, which I had thought was a great idea, was now causing me pain. The V-shape it made me sleep and seemed to make the condition worse. Every day became a battle. I couldn't eat without throwing up, the mucus making me feel sick. I was weak, thirsty, and far away from any doctor. The beautiful paths and views that I had loved now seemed scary and dangerous. I was alone, frightened, and ill. Even though things were tough, I knew I had to keep going. I forced myself to walk, to take one step after another. I lived on water and the few bits of food I could keep down. The nights were the hardest, the darkness making my fears worse and the cold making me shiver. On the seventh day, I finally got to the end of the trail. I was just a shadow of the excited hiker who had started the journey, but I had made it. I had survived. The experience was a tough lesson in being humble and respecting nature. It taught me how important it is to prepare properly and the dangers of being too confident. It was a week of fear, but it was also a week of learning, growing, and in the end, surviving. We decided to go camping at the Rocky Mountain National Park for a week. It was me, my boyfriend, his friend, and we were all from NW Ohio, a very flat place. We thought mountain camping in August would be easy, we only brought blankets and pillows, just like we do for summer camping back home. The first day was amazing. The hike was tough but exciting, and the views were incredible. When night came, we set up our camp, lit a fire, and had a great time chatting and laughing under the stars. But when it got really dark, it also got really cold. It was so cold that we were shaking even with the fire and blankets. I remember thinking, I've never been this cold. We didn't expect the nights in the mountains to be this cold, especially in August. Every night was the same. We would make a fire, but then the rain would come and put it out. We were left in the cold, shaking. We learned the hard way that mountain weather can be unpredictable. Even with all these problems, we didn't give up. We hiked during the day, saw beautiful places in the park, and survived the cold nights by staying close for warmth. We were young, in our twenties and we loved the adventure. Looking back, it was a good lesson for us. We learned to respect nature and its power. This lesson stayed with us when we moved to Colorado. We learned to prepare better for camping, getting the right gear and always checking the weather. Now, we also go camping in the desert, which has its own challenges. But no matter where we go, we always remember that cold, rainy week in the Rocky Mountain National Park. It reminds us of how strong we are, how we can adjust, and the fun adventures that are waiting for us when we try new things. As the sun started to go down, we began our side trip to the store. The rest of our team chose to stay back at the camp, leaving just a few of us to go. We knew the path well, having walked it many times, but this time, it was unusually quiet. Walking along, the thick woods on both sides of the path seemed to close in on us. The only sounds were the leaves rustling and the occasional bird. A few miles in, we saw something that scared us. Right there, in the middle of the path, was a huge bear. Its fur was dark brown, its eyes black. It was just sitting there, like it owned the path. We quickly moved back, our hearts beating fast. But we had a problem. This was the only way to the store. We were stuck. 
We decided to make a lot of noise, hoping to scare the bear away. We stayed out of its sight, just around the bend in the path, and started shouting and clapping. After what felt like forever, we carefully looked around the corner. The bear was gone. We breathed a sigh of relief and continued on our way, walking a bit faster now. The bear had scared us, but we were set on reaching the store. When we finally got there, we felt a huge sense of relief. We had faced our fears and were okay. The rest of the walk back to the camp was normal, but we couldn't forget the bear on the path. It reminded us of how unpredictable nature can be and the respect it deserves. That night, as we sat around the campfire, the story of our run-in with the bear was the main topic. It was a story of fear, bravery, and survival. It was a story that would be told again and again, becoming part of our team's history. And even though it was scary, it also showed our strength and our ability to face challenges. It was a day we would always remember. A day when a normal hike turned into an adventure. A day when we came face to face with the wild and lived to tell about it. I was in college, full of energy and feeling unstoppable. I decided to go on a week-long hike in the Grand Canyon. I had this funny idea that I could go the whole week without needing to poop. I had never dug a hole to poop in before, and I was set on not doing it. The first few days were amazing. The beautiful views, the fresh air, the excitement of the hike it was all I had hoped for. But by the third or fourth day, my body started to feel the strain. Every muscle was sore from all the walking, and I could hardly move. One morning, I woke up with a desperate need to go. We were in a small valley, with hills all around us. I had no choice but to let go of my earlier plan. I got up, ignoring the pain in my muscles, and ran up the nearest hill. I had to get far enough away to dig a hole and do my business. The relief was instant and total. It felt like a huge weight had been lifted off me. I took a moment to laugh at the situation. Here I was, in one of the most beautiful places in the world, doing one of the most basic human things in the most basic way. As I walked back to the camp, I felt a new burst of energy. The rest of the hike was tough, but I was ready for it. I had learned a valuable lesson about respecting nature and listening to my body. The week-long trip in the Grand Canyon was a life-changing experience. It taught me to be humble, to respect nature, and to listen to my body. It reminded me that no matter how advanced we become as a society, we are still bound by nature's rules. And in the end, it wasn't the beauty of the canyon or the excitement of the hike that stood out. It was the simple act of digging a hole on a hill that made the trip truly unforgettable. I've always loved going on adventures. I couldn't ignore the call of the wild, so I found myself at the start of the Burroughs Mountain Trail in Mount Rainier National Park, Washington. This trail is famous for its amazing views of Mount Rainier and the mountain landscape. It was my chosen spot for a solo hike. The trail was tough, with over 260 miles of paths. The morning air was fresh, and the sun was just starting to rise as I began my journey. The trail was surrounded by quiet old forests river valleys, and high meadows. The beauty was amazing, but the silence was spooky. As I went deeper into the trail, the weather started to change. The clear blue sky was covered by dark clouds. I suddenly felt cold. I was alone, far from any town, and the weather was getting worse. The wind was loud in the trees, and the once quiet forest seemed to be full of strange sounds. Every leaf moving, Every twig breaking made my heart beat faster. I walked faster, hoping to find a safe place before the storm came. Suddenly, I slipped on a wet rock and fell down a steep hill. My backpack was torn off my back, and I could only watch as it disappeared into the bushes. I was left with nothing but my clothes and a growing fear. I got up and tried to find my way. The trail was nowhere to be seen. I was lost. The truth hit me hard. I started to panic, but I forced myself to stay calm. I had to survive. I spent the night under a big tree, with the storm all around me. The darkness was heavy, 
and the sounds of the forest were scary. But I held on, hoping for the morning. When morning finally came, I was cold, hungry, and tired. But I was alive. I started walking, hoping to find the trail or someone who could help. After what felt like forever, I saw someone in the distance. A park ranger. I was saved. Looking back, that hike was the scariest thing I've ever done. But it also taught me important lessons about being strong and surviving. I was alone, lost, and scared, but I made it through. And that's what really matters in the end. I've always liked hiking. It's fun to finish a trail and be out in nature. But my last hike on the Bear Mountain Trail was not like the others. Bear Mountain Trail is a trail that's about 4.6 miles long, and it's in Sedona, Arizona. It's a trail that a lot of people use, and it's best for those who have hiked a lot before. The trail is known for its pretty flowers and the great views. The day I went hiking was sunny. The trail was hard, with parts that went up a lot and areas with rocks. The flowers were all out, and their bright colors stood out against the rough landscape. From the top, I could see the whole valley. It was a great sight. As I was going back down, the sun started to set, and it made long shadows on the trail. All of a sudden, I heard a sound like something moving behind me. I looked back, but there was nothing there. I thought it was just the wind and kept going. The sound of something moving got louder and seemed closer. I started to walk faster, my heart was beating fast. I felt like the hairs on the back of my neck were standing up. I didn't dare to look back. Then I tripped over a rock and fell. I got up quickly and looked around. There was still nothing there. The sound had stopped. I felt relieved and kept going. When I got to the end of the trail, I looked back one last time. The trail was empty, the rustling sound was gone. I was safe. I got into my car and drove home, still feeling excited from the hike. That night, I lay in bed, thinking about what happened during the day. I knew one thing for sure, I would never forget my hike on the Bear Mountain Trail. I was a scout. Every summer, we'd go on a trip to enjoy nature. But there's one trip I can't forget, not because it was fun but because something weird happened that still scares me. Every night, I'd get into my tent, get cozy in my sleeping bag, and fall asleep to the sounds of the forest. But as the night went on, something odd would happen. I'd wake up, not inside my tent, but outside under the sky, lying on the wet grass, looking up at the stars. This didn't just happen once. It happened every night of that trip. At first, we thought it was funny, thinking I'd rolled out of the tent while sleeping. But there was a pole there that should have woken me up if I'd bumped into it. I don't walk in my sleep. I'd never done it before, and I haven't done it since. And the weirdest part? I was always still wrapped up in my sleeping bag, as if someone or something had picked me up and put me outside, without waking me up. The idea of someone moving me while I was asleep was creepy. But everyone in our group was there and no one saw anything weird. The leaders were just as confused as we were. We even tried staying up to watch, but it didn't change anything. I'd still wake up under the stars, with no idea how I got there. The week ended, and we left the campsite, but I still think about what happened. I've been on many trips since then, but nothing like that ever happened again. I still think about those nights, wondering what moved me, and why. Not knowing is the hardest part. It's a puzzle that's still not solved, a story without an end. But one thing is clear. That week changed me. It showed me that nature is full of mysteries, some beautiful, some strange, and some really scary. And sometimes, you're not supposed to find the answers. Maybe it's these unsolved mysteries that keep pulling me back to nature, over and over again. I used to love going alone to my grandparents' big piece of land in the middle of nowhere. I'd walk into the woods, pick a random spot, and set up camp for the night. It was always an exciting thing to do. One night, 
I made a simple shelter out of branches and leaves. It fit right in with the rest of the woods. When night came, I could hear all the sounds of the animals that come out after dark. I wrapped up in a light blanket and fell asleep to the sounds of the woods. When the sun started to come up, I woke up. The blanket over my face was thin enough that I could see a bit through it. As I was waking up, I saw what looked like two men standing outside my shelter, looking at me. I couldn't see their faces, but they were wearing old-fashioned wide-brimmed hats. They just stood there, like they were wondering what I was doing there. I woke up fully and pulled the blanket off my face quickly, expecting to see the men. But there was no one there. The place where the men had been was empty, with only the trees moving slightly in the morning wind. I was left wondering if it had been a dream or if my sleepy eyes had played a trick on me. But the whole thing felt so real that it left me feeling a bit uneasy. I spent the rest of the day trying to shake off the weird feeling, but the peacefulness of the woods now felt a bit strange. When the sun went down and the sky turned colors, I thought about what had happened. The woods, which had always been a place of peace for me, had shown me something I hadn't seen before. But even though it was a bit scary, it didn't stop me from going on my solo adventures. Instead, it made them more interesting, reminding me that even in places you know well, there can be surprises. From then on, every trip into the woods had a bit of excitement, a small thrill that came from not knowing what might happen. And even though I never saw the figures again, the memory of them stayed with me, a quiet reminder of the mystery of the woods. The experience, as strange as it was, became a part of my camping stories, a story to be told again and again, a reminder of the day the woods shared their secrets with me. When I was 16, I went on a camping trip with some older teens, all between 19 and 21. We didn't know each other well, but we were all excited about the adventure. We chose a quiet campground in rural Oregon, a place so out of the way it felt like our own secret spot. The first day was full of typical camping stuff pitching tents, collecting firewood, and checking out the area. But on the second day, things went south. The guy who drove us there, the only one with a car, had a big fight with his girlfriend. He thought she was flirting with another guy in our group, and in a rage he left, leaving us stuck in the middle of nowhere. We couldn't believe it, but we thought he would come back or tell others where we were. But as the third day ended, we started to lose hope. This was before everyone had cell phones, and we were at least 10 miles from any main road. We were totally alone. That third night was scary. We had no food left, and we didn't know what to do. We were all scared and didn't know what to do. The next morning, we thought about walking to the main road but we couldn't agree on what to do. Things looked bad until, luckily, a family showed up at the campground. They were surprised to see us there, and when they heard our story, they kindly offered to drive a few of us to the nearest town. Once in town, we managed to call for help and arrange for people to come and pick us up, along with our camping gear. We were so relieved, and as we left the campground, I couldn't help but look back at the wilderness that had been our home for the past few days. I never spoke to any of the people from that trip again. The experience taught me a tough lesson about trust and being prepared, one that I would remember for the rest of my life. It was a harsh reminder of how quickly a fun adventure can turn into a struggle for survival. But it also taught me about the kindness of strangers and the importance of staying calm when things go wrong. Despite the fear and uncertainty, I came out of the experience stronger and more able to handle tough situations forever changed by those few days in the wilderness. It was a real-life adventure, a survival story, that I would carry with me for the rest of my life. It was my last night camping alone in Northeast Ohio. The night was quiet, and I woke up to go to the bathroom. I walked a bit away from my hammock and saw a light about a football field away from me. It was scary seeing the light in the dark woods. I watched the person with the light for about 10 minutes. He was moving around, and I felt worried. I decided to check it out, so I put on my boots, took my hatchet, and started walking away from my campsite. I hadn't walked far when I saw another light, 
this one closer. My heart was beating fast as I hid on the ground, covering myself with leaves. The second person walked around, stopped near me, lit a cigarette, drank his beer, and threw the can on the ground. When he was far enough away, I got up and started walking towards the first guy. As I got closer, I could hear his phone getting messages. I moved closer, enough to see his face lit up by his phone. Suddenly, he stood up and started walking towards my hammock. I froze, watching him from where I was hiding. I waited a bit before going back to my site. When I got there, I heard the sounds of my tarp being messed up. Lights were moving around my campsite, and I saw my big flashlight turn on and off. I heard my cooking set being thrown around and voices saying, He was just here. I laid on the ground, watching my flashlight walk away until it was just a small light in the distance. When the sun came up, I went back to my site. It was all messed up. My hammock and tarp were torn up, looking like they had been cut with a big knife. My cooking set was crushed, and my backpack, rain gear, and flashlight were gone. I went to the place where I had seen the first guy and found two pouches, eight empty beer cans, and an empty lighter. At the second place, I found an empty bag of powder, which was meth, a bunch of cigarette butts, and a pile of poop with no toilet paper. That's when it hit me. I had been camping near some dangerous people, maybe even criminals. I was lucky to have gotten away safe. The experience was a tough reminder of how unpredictable and potentially dangerous the woods can be. From then on, I promised to be more careful and ready during my camping trips, knowing that the real world can be scarier than any ghost story. I went camping by myself for one of the first times. The day was long and I was tired, but I enjoyed the walk and the quiet of nature. When the sun started to go down, I found a good place and set up my tent. The air was fresh, and the sound of the leaves was calming. I was alone, but I felt okay. When it got dark, I turned on my headlamp. The light cut through the dark. I was getting ready for bed, sorting out my stuff and making a small dinner. Suddenly, I saw a pair of eyes glowing in the light, not far from me. My heart started beating fast. I thought it was a raccoon or a fox, which you often see around here. But then, something strange happened. The eyes moved up until they were almost as high as me. I felt a cold shiver. This was not a small animal. I stood still, holding my breath. Then, the animal stepped into the light. It was a deer, its fur shiny brown in the light of my headlamp. It had stopped eating to look at me, its eyes big and curious. I felt relieved, but my heart was still beating fast from the shock. I laughed a little, more because I was relieved than because it was funny. The deer didn't seem to mind me and went back to eating, then slowly walked away into the dark. That night, I lay in my tent, thinking about the deer's glowing eyes. The peaceful sound of the crickets outside was very different from the excitement I had felt earlier. It reminded me of how unpredictable nature can be and how it can be exciting and scary at the same time. As I fell asleep, I realized that this is what camping is all about. It's not just about the walk or the view, but also about these unexpected moments, the stories that I would remember. I knew I would never forget that night, a story I would tell many times. The night when a simple deer made me feel more alive than ever before. I'm new to hiking and I usually go for day hikes in my local parks. I love the quiet trails, the sound of leaves, birds, and sometimes, a squirrel running around. One bright afternoon, I chose to try a new trail. The path was thin and twisted, going through the thick woods. The sun shining through the trees made a pretty pattern of light and dark on the ground. As I went further into the forest, I saw a weird tree. Its twisted branches looked like hands, and its skin was a mix of green and brown. I wanted to see it up close. Just as I was about to touch the tree, I felt something heavy on my shoulder. A cold, sliding feeling went down my back. I was scared, my heart was beating fast. I slowly looked and saw a snake, its split tongue moving in and out. I was so scared, 
I screamed and shook myself hard, making the snake fall. It quickly slid away into the bushes. I found myself running faster than ever. The quiet forest had suddenly become a scary place. I ran until I could see the usual path leading back to the park's entrance. I was breathing hard. I slowed down and finally stopped, my heart still beating fast. I looked back at the thick forest, my fears slowly going away. That day, I learned an important lesson about respecting nature and its creatures. I also learned that fear can make us do things we never thought we could. From then on, every hike became an adventure, a chance to face my fears and become stronger. So, even though the memory of the snake falling from the tree still scares me, I keep hiking. Because in the end, it's not just about the end of the trail, but also about the journey and the lessons we learn on the way. In 2022, my buddy and I went on a camping trip. We had to walk four miles along a river to get to the campsite. We decided to walk half the distance on the first day and camp halfway. On the first day, we heard the sounds of birds and the river flowing. We set up our camp as the sun was setting. The sky looked beautiful with orange and purple colors. The night was quiet, with only the sound of crickets and the wind. When I woke up the next morning, I saw two kids standing on the trail. A girl who looked about six or seven, and a boy who seemed about four or five. The girl waved at me, and I waved back, thinking their parents would be right behind them. But then, the girl said, we're lost. It was around nine in the morning, and these kids had walked about a mile from their campsite. They had crossed the river several times, and their clothes were wet and they were cold. We quickly packed our stuff and decided to take the kids back the way they came. The trail was tough, with four to five river crossings. We were worried, thinking about what could have happened to these kids if we hadn't found them. After a while, we finally saw their parents. They looked so relieved and hugged their kids tight. We told them what had happened, and they thanked us a lot. As we continued our trip, we kept thinking about what had happened. It reminded us how unpredictable nature can be, but it also showed us how important it is to help others. Even though it was scary, the trip ended well, with the kids safe and a story to remember. It could have been a really bad situation, but everything turned out okay. I'll always remember this trip, with its scary and happy moments. It was a real adventure, showing us how life can be full of surprises. I was driving home from a day of climbing as the sun was going down. The road was quiet and the air smelled like pine trees. Suddenly, I saw a mountain lion in the middle of the road. Its eyes met mine as I came around the bend. For a moment, everything was still. Then, with a quick jump, it was gone. The mountain lion jumped at least 15 feet to the side of the road. It was a scary sight that gave me chills. I didn't really understand how powerful a big cat could be until then. I kept driving, but the image of the mountain lion's jump stayed in my mind. The rest of the drive was normal, but the experience left a big impression on me. The forest, which used to feel like a playground, now felt a bit mysterious. When I got home, the excitement of the encounter slowly faded. But I was left with a new respect for the wilderness. The encounter with the mountain lion was a strong reminder of the power and beauty of nature. That night, as I lay in bed, I kept thinking about the mountain lion's jump. It was a humbling experience. It reminded me that we are just visitors in the wilderness part of a much bigger world. In the end, the encounter with the mountain lion wasn't just a scary experience, it was a lesson. A lesson about respect, humility, and the amazing power of nature. As I fell asleep, I kept thinking about the mountain lion's jump. It was a scary but beautiful memory of the wild. I've always loved exploring. Living in Washington State, I had some of the best hiking paths in America right at my doorstep. One bright morning, I decided to go on a solo hike on the Burroughs Mountain Trail in Mount Rainier National Park. The trail was famous for its amazing views of Mount Rainier and the mountain landscape. 
It was a sunny day, and the mountain looked beautiful against the blue sky. The trail was in good shape, going through quiet forests, river valleys, and open meadows. As I went further on the trail, the sun started to set, making long shadows on the path. The sound of leaves rustling and an owl hooting in the distance were the only sounds. I felt a bit scared, not because of the cold, but because I was all alone. Suddenly, I heard a noise in the bushes nearby. My heart was beating fast as I turned around, thinking I might see a bear. But there was nothing. I laughed a bit, telling myself not to let my thoughts scare me. As I kept hiking, I noticed the trail getting steeper and more difficult. I slipped on a loose rock and hurt my ankle. I felt a sharp pain in my leg, and I knew I was in trouble. I was alone, hurt, and it was getting dark. I slowly walked along the trail, using a strong branch to help me walk. The pain was really bad, but I knew I had to keep going. I thought about the big wilderness around me, being alone, and not knowing what was going to happen. It was a real fear. After what felt like forever, I saw the lights of a ranger station far away. I felt relieved as I slowly walked towards it. I was safe. Looking back at the mountain, I felt a kind of respect. The trail had challenged me, pushed me to my limits. It was a reminder of the wild beauty of nature and the humbling experience of facing it alone. It was a dark night, with no moon in sight. My husband and I were lost on a trail, with only the sound of leaves and the quiet of the night for company. We had started off on a simple walk, but as the sun set, we realized we had lost our way. The woods around us were full of shadows, with tall trees all around. The air smelled of wet soil and pine trees, reminding us of how alone we were. We had to keep going, our hearts beating fast. In the middle of our walk we heard it. A low growl, a sound so scary it gave us goosebumps. We stopped, looking around in the dark. Then we saw it, two eyes glowing in the dark, a cougar. It was following us, its screams breaking the quiet of the night. We didn't even know it was a cat at the time, it was just a scary unknown. We started to walk faster, the cougar's screams ringing in our ears. Every sound of leaves, Every break of a twig made us more scared. We held on to each other, our shared fear bringing us closer. The cougar kept following us, its screams reminding us of the danger close by. Time seemed to slow down, each minute felt like forever. We were tired but we kept going. We never thought of giving up. We were in this together, and we would get out of it together. Finally, after what felt like forever, we saw it. A gap in the trees, the weak light of the moon showing us the way. We walked faster, the cougar's screams getting quieter. We came out of the woods, the open sky a welcome sight. We were safe, but the memory of that night stayed with us, a scary reminder of what we had been through. In the days that followed, I found myself getting scared at the smallest sounds in the woods. The incident had left a mark on me, a mild form of PTSD that got triggered by the sounds of the woods at night. But we had made it, and that was what mattered. We had faced our fears, stood our ground, and come out stronger. The experience had brought us closer, and in tough times, we had found a better understanding of each other. That night was a proof of our strength, a story of survival and bravery. It was a night we would never forget, a night that defined us. And even though the memory was scary, it was also a reminder of our strength, our will, and the bond we shared. It was a story of us, a story of survival, a story of love. And in the end, that's what mattered the most. I've always loved exploring, and living in Alaska gave me lots of chances to do that. One day, I decided to hike the Flattop Mountain Trail, a well-known trail near Anchorage. It's the most hiked mountain in the state and it's 3,510 feet high. The morning was cool and clear when I started my hike. The trail was tough, with lots of steep parts and rocky ground. The higher I went, the smaller the city of Anchorage looked until it was just a tiny dot in the distance. As I went up, it got colder, and a thick fog came in, 
making it hard to see more than a few feet ahead. The trail that I knew so well now seemed strange and scary. I could hear leaves rustling and twigs snapping in the woods around me. My heart was beating fast, and each beat filled the quiet around me. All of a sudden, I slipped on a loose rock and fell down a steep part of the trail. My ankle hurt a lot, and I knew I had twisted it. I was alone, hurt, and couldn't see much because of the fog. I started to panic, but I knew I had to stay calm. I wrapped my ankle with my first aid kit and used a strong branch as a crutch. I knew I had to get down the mountain before it got dark. The trail was dangerous, and every step hurt my ankle. But I kept going, because I wanted to survive. After a few hours, just when I thought I couldn't go any further, I saw the dim lights of the city through the fog. I felt relieved. I wasn't far now. With new energy, I limped down the trail, each step bringing me closer to safety. At last, I got to the bottom of the mountain. I was cold, tired, and in pain, but I was alive. When I looked back at the foggy mountain, I felt proud. I had faced my fears, survived, and come out stronger. That day, I learned that real adventure isn't just about seeing new places. It's about the challenges we beat, the fears we face, and the strength we find in ourselves. I've always loved going on adventures. So, when I decided to go on a trip alone to Colorado, it seemed like the perfect chance to enjoy nature. I rented a cabin at the Arrowhead Point Camping Resort, a place famous for its beautiful views and peaceful surroundings. The campsite was big, with lots of cabins spread out, each with a different view of the mountains around. The air was clean and fresh, smelling of pine trees and wildflowers. The resort was clean, with good facilities and clear paths leading into the wild. On my first night, I got comfortable in my cabin, a small wooden house hidden among the trees. As night came, the sounds of the forest became louder. The leaves rustling, the far-off sound of an owl, the gentle sound of the wind. It was like a music concert of nature that was both spooky and beautiful. One night, I woke up to a strange sound. It was a low growl, not too far from my cabin. My heart was beating fast as I slowly got up and looked out the window. In the moonlight, I saw a big shape moving quietly near the edge of the forest. It was a bear, probably drawn by the smell of food. I stayed as quiet as I could, watching the bear search through a nearby trash bin. After what felt like a very long time, the bear finally left, going back into the forest. I breathed a sigh of relief, my heart still beating fast from the experience. The next morning, I told the campsite staff about the incident. They acted quickly, making sure that all food waste was locked away and reminding campers to be careful. Even though I was scared, I stayed at the campsite, being extra careful to avoid any more encounters with wildlife. The rest of my trip was calm, filled with long walks, amazing views, and the peaceful beauty of nature. As I was packing to leave, I looked back at the cabin one last time. Even though the adventure was unexpected, I felt proud. I had faced my fears, survived a night in the wild, and come out stronger. The experience was a reminder of the powerful and unpredictable beauty of nature, a memory I would keep with me forever. I've always enjoyed being outside. So, when I had the opportunity to rent a small house at the High Plains camping site in Wyoming, I jumped at it. The camping area was huge, with 69 spots spread out over a large area. It was about 3,031 feet high, and the view was amazing. There were many RVs around, but I chose a more old-fashioned experience a small house in the middle of nowhere. The first day was pretty normal. I spent my time walking around the camping area, enjoying the beauty of nature. The sky was bright blue, and the air was clean and fresh. When it got dark, I went back to my small house, a comfy little place made of logs. Inside was simple, with just one bed, a tiny kitchen, and a fireplace. Things started to get weird on the second day. I woke up to find my stuff all over the place. I thought it was strange, but I ignored it, thinking maybe the wind had blown through an open window. 
I spent the day walking, trying to forget about the weird feeling I had. That night, I was woken up by a loud noise. It sounded like something heavy being pulled across the ground. I sat up, my heart racing. I listened carefully, but all I could hear was my own breathing. I decided to check it out. I went outside, the cold air hitting my face. The moon was high in the sky, making long shadows on the ground. I walked around the small house, but I didn't see anything unusual. Just when I was about to go back inside, I heard it again the sound of something being pulled. I followed the sound, my flashlight making a small circle of light in the dark. I walked for what felt like forever until I found a clearing. In the middle of the clearing was a big, old tree stump. It looked like it had been pulled there recently. But by what? And why? I felt a shiver down my back. I turned around and ran back to the small house, locking the door behind me. I didn't sleep that night. The next morning, I packed up my stuff and left. As I was driving away, I looked in the rearview mirror. The small house looked calm in the morning light, hiding the fear of the previous night. I never found out what had pulled the tree stump to the clearing that night. Maybe it was just an animal, or maybe it was something else. But one thing was for sure I would never forget my time at the High Plains camping site. And that's the end of the story. I hope you found it interesting and believable. Remember, this is a made-up story and any similarity to real events or places or people, alive or dead, is just a coincidence. I've always lived in Texas, but I couldn't resist the pull of the Grand Island KOA Journey campsite in Nebraska. I decided to rent a cabin there for a week, looking forward to the peace that only nature can give. The campsite was a quiet park in the country, surrounded by Nebraska farm fields. It was big, with long, flat sites that had plenty of room, even for the biggest trailers. The cabins were tucked away among the trees, each one with a small fridge and air conditioning. On my first day, I got settled into my cabin, a comfy place made of wood and stone. Inside was simple but nice, with a small kitchen, a bed, and a living area. The windows looked out over the campsite, showing off the beautiful nature around me. As the days went by, I explored the campsite, taking long walks and enjoying the quiet. The sound of the leaves, the birds, and the wind were my only company. I loved the quiet finding it both relaxing and refreshing. One night, as I was getting ready to go to bed, I noticed something strange. The usually lively campsite had gone strangely quiet. The wind had stopped, and the leaves were still. The silence was so loud, it made me feel uneasy. I rushed back to my cabin, locking the door behind me. As I lay in bed, I could hear weird noises outside. It sounded like soft footsteps on the gravel path leading to my cabin. My heart was beating fast as I listened closely. The footsteps got louder, coming closer to my cabin. I held my breath, waiting for what might happen next. Then, all of a sudden, the noises stopped. I waited, but nothing happened. After what felt like forever, I finally let out a sigh of relief. The next morning, I went outside half expecting to see signs of what had happened the night before. But everything was as it should be. The campsite was once again filled with the sounds of nature, and the feeling of unease was gone. I spent the rest of my stay in peace, enjoying the beauty of the campsite. The strange event of that one night remained a mystery, but it didn't ruin my trip. As I packed up to leave, I looked back at the cabin one last time, a smile on my face. Despite the scare, my stay at the Grand Island KOA journey had been an experience I'll never forget. This March, I went on a hiking and camping trip with some friends. One of them was new to this, a city guy who had never been out in the wild before. When the sun went down, we set up our camp. The air was cool, and the only sound was the occasional rustling of leaves. The new guy noticed something strange there was a lot of dew on the ground, even though it hadn't rained. We turned on our headlamps, the only light we had, and saw the ground was covered in tiny glowing dots, like a starry sky. 
The new guy was interested, but got scared when I told him the dew was glowing red. I told him to look closer. He realized what was happening and went pale. The dew wasn't dew at all. It was the reflection of our headlamps in the eyes of tons of wolf spiders, hidden on the ground. That night, the new guy learned a few things. He found out why we use hammocks instead of tents, to stay away from the night creatures. He learned that wolf spider eyes glow red in bright light. But most of all, he learned that he didn't like being in the woods at night. When morning came, the new guy, who hadn't slept much, packed up his stuff. He had made it through his first night in the woods, a night he wouldn't forget any time soon. It was a tough way to learn about nature, but it also made him respect the wild and its creatures more. From then on, he would always check around at night, respect the creatures living in the woods, and never underestimate nature. As for me, it was another reminder of why it's important to be prepared, respect nature, and enjoy the surprises that make each hiking trip special. When we were in our early twenties, my friend and I loved going on adventures. One bright afternoon, he took some acid and we decided to go for a walk near a fishing lake in the city. The place was in the city, but the lake gave us a feeling of being in the wild, a nice change from the city life. As we walked, the noise of the city slowly faded away, replaced by the sound of leaves rustling and fish splashing in the lake. The acid started to work for my friend, making his senses sharper and the colors around him brighter. We climbed a small hill, and the lake was now out of sight. Suddenly, we heard a scary sound of dog crying. We stopped, the sound still ringing in our ears. Looking over the hill, we saw something that would scare us forever. A man was there, and he was hurting a dog. My friend was so scared, he couldn't move or make a sound. He was stuck in his own thoughts, the acid making his fear worse. I felt a cold fear in my stomach as we sat there, hidden, forced to watch the scary scene. The man finally left, leaving behind the dead body of the dog. We sat there for what felt like forever, the silence was so loud. My friend was white, his eyes wide with shock. The bright colors he had seen earlier had turned into a scary shade. We managed to get up and leave the hill, the image of the man and the dog stuck in our minds. The rest of the walk was a blur, the earlier excitement replaced with a heavy silence. That day changed us. The city walk near the fishing lake was no longer an adventure but a reminder of the cruel thing we had seen. We learned the hard way that not all walks lead to beautiful places, some just show you the hard truths of life. The memory of that day still stays with us, a scary reminder of the bad things that exist in the world. But it also taught us the importance of standing up against such cruelty, a lesson we keep with us till today. The sun had gone down over the peaceful Ray Lakes in California, and night had fallen. Our group, a bunch of sensible hikers, had made camp for the night. We were sitting comfortably around a warm campfire, its light casting long shadows on our faces. The quiet of the night was only broken by the occasional sound of an owl or the rustling of leaves in the wind. Off in the distance, we saw a single headlamp, its light moving up and down as it came down the winding paths that we were to climb the next day. The sight was spooky, and it made us feel uneasy. Why would anyone, especially someone carrying a tent, choose to hike at night? The question was left hanging in the air, adding to the growing tension. We were also worried about something else. We had caught six fish from the lake, one more than the allowed limit. The thought of breaking the rules, even by accident, was bothering us. As the night went on, the headlamp got closer. Finally, the stranger arrived at our camp. He was a tough-looking man, his face showing signs of what seemed like years of living outdoors. He told us he was part of a group that thought the Sierra Club was too right-wing. His goal was unsettling. He wanted to get rid of all the trout in the High Sierra Lakes. He believed that by doing so, the natural balance would be restored, allowing the frogs and mosquitoes to take over again. His words gave us the chills. The thought of such a big change in the ecosystem was scary, and his lack of care for the beauty of the trout was upsetting. 
After the stranger left our camp, we sat in silence, the only sound being the crackling of the fire. We were left feeling uneasy, like our peaceful hike had been interrupted by a disturbing reality. The peace of the night had been replaced with a sense of dread. The next morning, we packed up our camp, our minds still full of the events of the previous night. As we started our climb up the winding paths, we couldn't help but look back at the lake, its calm surface hiding the chaos that lay beneath. The hike was no longer just a walk through nature, it had become a time to think about our impact on the environment. The stranger's words had stuck with us. We realized that every action, no matter how small, could have a big impact on the world around us. As we reached the top of the winding paths, we took one last look at Ray Lakes. It was a reminder of the beauty of nature and the responsibility we have to protect it. The experience had been unsettling, but it had also been eye-opening. We had set out on a simple hike, but we had come back with a deeper understanding of our place in the world. The journey had been scary, but it had also been really meaningful, and that made all the difference. When I was 15, I was thumbing a ride home on the Huan Highway in Tasmania. The sun was going down, and the road was getting dark. I was in my soccer uniform, with Hobart Juniors, written big on the front and back. My aunt couldn't pick me up from practice because something came up at her job. I was alone, hoping someone would stop and give me a lift. A taxi stopped. The driver, a man who looked like he was in his 40s, asked if I needed a ride. I didn't think twice and got in, happy that someone had stopped. But then things got bad. He offered me $300 for something I didn't want to do. I was shocked, scared, and didn't know what to do. I was just a kid trying to get home. About 15 minutes into the ride, he did something terrible to me. I was scared out of my mind, not understanding what was happening. Then he pushed me out of his taxi, threw $40 and $5 bills at me. I was left alone, shaking and scared, on a dark road, barely dressed and far from home. I remember it was really late, maybe midnight or 1 a.m. I remember seeing Christmas lights in the distance, which seemed so out of place compared to what I had just gone through. I remember the cold wind on my skin, my ruined dress, and the awful memory that I'll never forget. From that day on, I never trusted taxi drivers who stopped to offer rides. If I didn't call you, you can keep driving. I've heard scary stories about strange Uber drivers since then, and I realize I was lucky. I wasn't hurt badly. I wasn't robbed. Just a ruined dress, a terrible memory, and a hard lesson learned. Even though it was a horrible experience, it made me stronger. It taught me to be careful, to trust my gut, and to stand up for myself. It's a memory I wish I didn't have but it's part of my past that made me who I am today. And because of that, I'm not just a survivor, but a fighter. I've always loved exploring. Living in Washington State, I had some of the best hiking paths in America right at my doorstep. One day, I chose to hike the Burroughs Mountain Trail in Mount Rainier National Park. The trail was famous for its amazing views of Mount Rainier and the mountain landscape. It was a sunny day, and the trail looked welcoming. I started my hike in the morning, with a backpack full of what I needed and a lot of excitement. The trail was tough but pretty. The path wound its way through quiet forests, river valleys, and high meadows. Seeing Mount Rainier, which is 14,410 feet tall, reaching up into the clouds was an awesome sight. As I went further along the trail, the weather started to change. The sky, which had been clear, was now full of dark clouds. I felt a bit worried, but I chose to keep going, hoping to find a safe spot before the weather got worse. Suddenly, I heard a loud noise echoing through the mountains, followed by a rumbling sound. My heart was beating fast as I realized what was happening a landslide. I could see a cloud of dust in the distance. I felt scared, but I knew I had to stay calm. I quickly looked around and saw a big rock nearby. I ran towards it, hiding behind it just as the landslide hit the trail. I could hear rocks and dirt hitting the other side of the rock. 
After what seemed like forever, the noise finally stopped. I carefully looked out from behind the rock. The trail I had been on was completely covered by the landslide. But I was still alive. I spent the night behind the rock, too pumped up to sleep. When the sun started to rise, I began the hard journey back, making my way through the landslide and finding a new path. Finally, after hours of hard hiking, I saw the start of the trail again. I felt a wave of relief. I had made it through a scary experience, but it had taught me a valuable lesson about how unpredictable nature can be and how important it is to be prepared. Even though I had been scared, I knew I would go hiking again. After all, I couldn't resist the call of the wild. But I would always remember that day on the Burroughs Mountain Trail, the day when a simple hike turned into a struggle to survive. It was 1 a.m. and I was driving in the dark through the Poconos, going from New Jersey to East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. The road was empty, and all I could hear was my car and the sound of leaves blowing in the wind. Suddenly, my car lights showed a person in scrubs walking on the side of the road. I felt cold. What was someone doing out here, all alone, at this time? I slowed down, thinking I should see if they were okay. But as I got closer, I blinked and they were gone. I quickly looked in my car's mirror, but there was no one. Just an empty road lit up by my car lights. I felt scared. It must have been my eyes playing tricks, I thought, trying to get rid of the scary feeling. I kept driving, but the image of the person in scrubs stayed with me, making the rest of my drive feel weird. When I finally got to East Stroudsburg, the first light of the day was starting to show. The town was quiet, Everyone was still asleep. I parked my car and sat for a bit, enjoying the quiet. The image of the person in scrubs was still in my mind. It was probably just my imagination messing with me in the middle of the night. But the scary feeling stayed. I got out of the car, the cool morning air hitting my face. I looked around, half expecting to see the person in scrubs again. But there was no one. Just the quiet town, waking up to a new day. As I walked towards where I was going, I couldn't help but look back at the road I had driven. It was just a road, like any other. But in the middle of the night, it had turned into something else. Something that would stay with me long after I left the Poconos. In the end, it wasn't about the person in scrubs or the empty road. It was about the drive, the unknown, and the stories we tell ourselves to make sense of it all. And as the sun came up, getting rid of the night's darkness, I knew this was one drive I would never forget. I've always loved exploring, and living in Alaska gave me lots of chances to do that. One of my favorite places to go was the Flattop Mountain Trail, a tough but fun hike near Anchorage. It's the most popular mountain to climb in the state, and it's really tall 3,510 feet. One day, I decided to hike it by myself. The morning was cool and bright as I started my climb. The trail was rough, with lots of rocks and tree roots in the way. The air smelled like pine trees and wet dirt, and all I could hear was the sound of my boots on the rocks. As I got higher, there were fewer trees and more bushes and wildflowers. The view was amazing, with the whole of Alaska spread out around me. I could even see Anchorage far away looking tiny against the big mountains and forests. But as the day went on, the weather started to change. Dark clouds came in, covering the sun and making everything look dark and scary. The wind started to blow, making the leaves rustle and making me feel cold. I knew I should go back, but I really wanted to keep going. I was nearly at the top, and I wanted to get there before the storm did. But as I kept going, the trail got steeper and more dangerous. My heart was beating fast as I tried to avoid slipping on the wet rocks and narrow paths suddenly. There was a flash of lightning, followed by a loud thunderclap. It started to rain, making the trail muddy and slippery. I slipped and fell, and my heart was racing as I tried to find something to hold on to. I managed to get up and keep going, but the storm didn't stop. The wind was blowing hard, throwing the rain into my face and making it hard to see. I was wet and cold, but I was determined to get to the top. 
Finally, after what felt like forever, I made it to the top. I stood there, wet and cold from the wind and rain, looking out over the stormy landscape. It was scary, but also kind of beautiful. I felt proud of myself for making it to the top despite everything. Just as quickly as it had started, the storm ended, leaving a clear sky full of stars. I started to make my way back down the mountain, feeling tired but happy. It was a hike I would never forget, a reminder of how powerful nature is and how strong I can be. And so, I got back home, safe and sound, with a great story to tell and a new appreciation for the beauty of Alaska. The flattop mountain trail had been a real challenge, but in the end, I had won. I booked a cabin at the Chalk Creek Campground in Nathrop, Colorado. The campsite was right in the middle of the Rocky Mountains and was really beautiful. There were places for RVs and tents by the side of the stream, which was both peaceful and exciting. The campsite was big, with lots of tents and RVs spread out all over. The cabin I booked was a small, old building made of wood that had been there for many winters in Colorado. It was surrounded by tall pine trees and you could hear the sound of the leaves and the wind. The air was fresh and smelled like pine and the nearby creek. When the sun started to go down, I went for a walk around the campsite. The paths were well used, going through the forest and next to Chalk Creek. The sound of the water flowing was always there as I walked, which was really calming. When it got dark, the sky was full of stars. Back at the cabin, I started a fire and the light from the flames made shadows on the walls. The only sound was the fire. When I went to bed, the wind started to blow really hard outside and the trees were making noise. The cabin was making noise too, which was a bit scary in the middle of the night. I stayed awake, listening to all the sounds outside. All of a sudden, there was a loud noise in the cabin. My heart was beating fast as I got out of bed. I took a flashlight and carefully went outside. A big pine tree had fallen down, but it missed the cabin. I felt relieved when I realized that it was just the wind that made the tree fall down. When the sun came up, I was amazed by how powerful and beautiful nature is. The fallen tree was a reminder of that. When I was packing to leave, I looked at the cabin and the campsite one last time. Even though I got scared in the night, Staying at the Chalk Creek campground was an experience I'll never forget. I've always liked being outside. So, when I got the chance to rent a cabin at the Bear Canyon campground in Montana, I jumped at it. The campsite was right in the middle of the mountains, with an amazing view of the rough landscape. The campground was big, with lots of land and cabins spread out for privacy. The cabin I rented was simple but cozy, with a small porch that looked out on a thick forest. The first few days were quiet. I spent my time walking on the trails, fishing in the stream nearby, and enjoying being alone. One evening, when I was coming back from a walk, I noticed something weird. My cabin door was a bit open. I was sure I had locked it. I carefully opened the door. Everything looked okay. I brushed it off thinking I might have forgotten to lock it. The next day, I found my food all over the place. This was weird because I had put them away properly. I cleaned up, thinking some animal might have done it. On the third night, I was woken up by a strange noise. It sounded like soft steps outside my cabin. I held my breath, listening. The steps seemed to go around the cabin, getting louder then quieter. I gathered my courage to look out the window but saw nothing. The next morning, I found big, strange tracks around my cabin. They didn't look like any animal tracks I had seen. I started to feel scared, but I decided to stay one more night, hoping to figure out what was going on. That night, the steps came back, this time with a low growl. I could hear something scratching against the cabin wall. I was really scared. I grabbed my flashlight and opened the cabin door quickly, ready to face whatever was out there. To my surprise I found a big, confused bear, its foot stuck in a hidden trap. It was the cause of the strange things happening. I called the local animal rescue, who came quickly and safely freed the bear, 
making sure it was okay before letting it go back into the wild. The rest of my stay was calm. I realized that the real world could be scarier than any ghost story, but it was also a reminder of the respect we need to have for nature and its animals. The Bear Canyon campground will always be a special place for me, not just for its beautiful view, but for the adventure and the lesson it taught me. I've always loved going on adventures. So, I decided to go on a trip by myself to Cloudland Canyon State Park in Georgia. The park is famous for its pretty cliffs, waterfalls, and forests. The day I got there, the sun was going down. It made the whole park look nice and warm. I had rented a small cabin in the middle of the woods. It was a nice little place with one room and a small kitchen. The cabin was surrounded by big trees. Their leaves were moving in the soft wind. When it got dark, the forest started to make all sorts of sounds. The crickets were making noise, the owls were making noise, and the leaves were moving. I sat on the porch, enjoying the quietness of the wild. But as time went on, the forest became very quiet. The usual night sounds seemed to have gone away. I started to feel a bit scared. I decided to go back inside my cabin. Once inside, I locked the door and checked all the windows. The cabin was safe. I tried to calm myself down. I told myself that I was just not used to being in a new place. Suddenly, I heard a soft noise outside. My heart started beating fast. I looked through the window, but it was too dark to see anything. The noise came again, louder this time. It sounded like something heavy was being moved around. I picked up a flashlight and got the courage to go outside. The light from the flashlight showed a big tree branch that had fallen near the cabin. I felt relieved. It was just a branch, not some scary thing hiding in the dark. I spent the rest of the night inside, listening to the sounds of the forest come back. By morning the fear from the night before felt like a far-off memory. The sun came up, chasing away the darkness. The forest was beautiful again not scary. My trip to Cloudland Canyon State Park was quite an adventure. It taught me that sometimes, our fears are just like shadows in the dark, made bigger by our imagination. And when the sun comes up, those fears go away, leaving behind only the beauty of what's real. <laughs>